All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's JS Core Team Sync. Uh, Alan is out today, so I will be subbing in. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's go ahead and kick things off. If you have an update, you'd like to give an update, the crypt pad is in the chat. Uh, please add your name to the attendees list um, and feel free to add a note. I know we have a couple, pe couple new people on the call, so we'll leave time uh, for you guys at the end to, to say hi and what you're working on. Um, we'll go ahead and start. And I am at the top of the list, so I will go. Um, last week, I got the initial draft of identify push support in JSLibPDP, um, as well as the draft PR for the integration of that into Switch. Um, push support won't get added into Switch quite yet. I'm going to wait for uh, AutoNAT to get finished first, which I'll be working on this week. Uh, once we have AutoNAT support, then we'll actually be able to use identify push and Switch. So work on that. Um, also working on some stuff for IPFS camp. I'll continue to work on that this, this week. Um, and then I'm uh, meeting with some of the ops team later today to go over some of the uh, libp2p infrastructure inventory, like all of the um, signaling servers and star stuff like that. So we can make sure that um, deployment for that is good to go. Uh, does anybody have any questions for me? Oh, all right. Uh, Vashko is not here. Uh, he's helping support the JS Gossip Sub work. Uh, I think that initial work got merged. Um, they're going to be working on integration with libp2p and I think finalizing some miscellaneous items there. Uh, he was at Data Terra Nemo last week. Um, and this week, I think he's going to finish up the interface connection new proposal for the async await endeavor. Um, and then more async iterators work. If you have questions or are interested in anything Vashko's working on, feel free to ping him in PR or IRC. Um, next up, Dirk. Hey, everyone. Um, so this week I managed to get the refs and refs local endpoints released. And then I was just doing some work on the garbage collector uh, implementing locking. So that's just about done. I just need to to write some tests. And then I think we're ready to go with garbage collection. Nice, any questions for Dirk? Oh, all right, uh, Adam. Hey there, um, so the PR for the migration tool for JS is sort of ready. Um, it's in my own private repository, so I'll need sort of help how to uh, migrate under, I guess, IPFS organization in future. Um, also, initial work for the integration of this this migration tool to JS IPFS is already uh, up there. So, if you have time and interested, feel free to give me some feedback on it, please. Awesome. Any questions for Adam? Yeah. What kind of uh, feedback would you like at this stage, Adam? <clears throat> Um, there are some like shortcomings or not shortcomings, like edge cases that uh, I'm not sure uh, how should be tackled. They are in the PR, so if I, I think there is just maybe one or two, so not that much. But uh, if you have maybe some insight or even for the code itself, um, for some code review would be helpful. Cool. Okay. Thanks a lot for putting that together. Awesome. Any other questions for Adam? Cool. All right. Uh, and if I think Alan's out the rest of the day, uh, but if you haven't already pinged him um, in that repo, that'd be good for him to look at as well. I'd go ahead and ping him. Um, and then I will probably look at it as well because I think I'm still the lead maintainer of IPFS repo. So let's do that. All right. Next up, Jim. Um, so last week uh, it was just a little bit of a lot of. A lot of things. Um, the probably the biggest thing was IPFS Camp Corsi. We came up with a pretty good plan and prototype for the course content for that one. That's moving along. Um, the uh, for the IPFS and web browsers, um, they're looking at getting involved in the standardization process for uh, the web package spec 
web packaging spec. And I had a little bit of a demo built for that. So I decided to enhance that a little bit just to sort of move the conversation forward. And uh, it's, it actually sort of works. Um, it's not quite ready for uh, the public yet, um, but I'm gonna maybe work on that a little bit this week. Um, probably a bit more IPFS camp. And I have some more OKRs related to collab collaboration support work. So I'll talk to Arkady about that this week. And that's it for me. Great. Any questions for Jim? Oh, all right. Alex. Hello. So I've been, uh, yeah, I was at DTN Conf last week. That was super good fun. Um, learned a lot. Did a little talk on NPM on IPFS at the conference. Uh, it was well received. Uh, and it worked offline, which was great because there was no internet at the podium, though plenty of internet in the crowd, which was super tedious. But yeah, it went really well. Um, I've been working on the async await um, port of UnixFS, the import of exporter, and then MFS. They are all done. It's all async await all the time. No more pull streams. Well, it's sort of. There's some pull streams in MFS still because of how you end up passing IPFS back into MFS. Um, but like once the public API is refactored to remove pull streams and it'll disappear from there as well. But anyway, yay, that was amazing. I'm so happy. I can finally sleep now. Um, so this week, uh, I'm going to add some interrupt tests uh, around the importer because uh, something that I found is that a lot of the CIDs in the importer tests were actually not the same as the ones generated by Go. Uh, which was interesting. So they all worked. You could still export everything from it in both languages. They just not. They just don't agree on what the correct CID for a given DAG is. Um, so I'm going to add some interrupt tests around that uh, ones because there's not a lot of interrupt interrupt file related tests. Uh, once I've done that, I need. To, I'm going to try and look at the performance impact of these tests because obviously the the import and export of nodes is a pretty hot code part. So we want to make sure that the async await stuff isn't uh, negatively impacting performance. Uh, and then I'm gonna get back onto NPM on IPFS, uh, need to upgrade to the almost latest, or to the latest JS IPFS. Um, and Infra are hopefully gonna furnish me with some credentials that means I can deploy the whole thing on uh, a, a container service, uh, probably EC2, um, which will make it a lot more scalable because at the moment it's just a, a Docker, like a set of Docker images running on one machine. Um, so that's going to be great, and that'll be me. Uh, anyone got any questions? All right. Yes. Next, Walker. Hi. So uh, the past week was the um, IPLD team week in Berlin, and also that I was also at the DTN Conf. Um, if you're interested in what like what's hot and new in the IPLD team. Uh, most of the stuff will happen in the specs repository. So just watch this and then, yeah, you will get all the updates and see what's going on. It's currently mostly focused on schemas. I'm not locked. And next week I will um, work on the cleaning a bit the JS IPLD DAG, AP, DAG protocol buffers thing a bit up. Um, goal is to cause more headaches for Alex. So again, like some, <laughs> it's, uh, but it, but it's in agreement with him to make the IPA smaller, which probably then leads to more breaking changes. But they should be really minimal and once for all, hopefully. And um, I will also work a bit on the multi-format stuff because um, there's still a few inconsistencies from like ages ago, and just yeah, make sure everything is consistent and. Um, Easy to understand. Um, yeah, that's all I have. Any questions for Volker? Oh, all right. OK, we have a couple new faces. Do you guys want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Prabhakar. I'm from India. So I'm in uh, this uh, career extension program from Festo Tech. Uh, so the next four weeks, I'll be working completely full time in IPFS, at least, and I'll probably continue working on it after that. So I'll start with help first and basic issues. 
then i'll continue with more advanced issues later on after a couple of weeks awesome that's awesome. it yeah well, great test great to have you thank you Hi, I'm Chirag and Prabhakar and I are from the same career accelerator program. So I'll be looking forward to make my first open source contribution uh, in the coming weeks. So really excited about it. Fantastic. Yeah, super excited to have you guys on. Oh, all right. There are no other updates from anybody. We will jump into cross-team updates. Lytle. Yeah, I joined this call just in time. <laughs> so uh, just a PSA that WebRTC Working Group at W3C is looking for uh, P2P and DHT related use cases for the next uh, version of WebRTC spec. And there is also um, a related origin trial of uh, WebRTC over Quick. Um, which uh, I believe uh, folks from the P2P may be interested in. So I thought I mentioned uh, during this call. And on the cross uh, team updates front, uh, we have a PR open to add a multi new multi codec to represent the uh, P2P public keys. And like the main uh, use for that will be representing uh, peer IDs uh, in CIDV1 and that will unlock uh, use in subdomains. Uh, that will be like the first uh, practical use of that, but uh, it will unlock much more when we are no longer bound to base 58. Uh, and that's uh, an update from me. I have a question for the, um, we have the libpdp call team sync later today. Um, mm -hmm. Is there, something we can help get because i i looked through the dht p2p use cases um and it looked like they were asking for potentially from somebody from pl to help out or join that um call is that something that i can help uh round up somebody for yeah ideally uh, if we could uh, get someone from uh lip p2p uh, familiar with the matter and uh, our needs to make a good case like what's missing in current uh, spec or what could be unlocked if we had better handling of P2P uh, uh, specs uh, that would be tremendously helpful yeah okay yeah I will uh, bring that up on the team scene call and see if we can get you somebody sweet awesome all right. Does anybody have any questions for Lytle? All right. That is it for the updates. Does anybody have any questions or anything they want to talk about? Dirk? Yeah, I actually just wanted to ask you um, if you could talk a little bit about the relationship between AutoNet and identity. Yeah. So ultimately what AutoNet, the goal of AutoNet is it's a protocol that right now Go already supports. Um, so we want to add it to JS with P2P. And ultimately what that's doing is it's communicating to try to determine are we on an at, um, if we have any public IP addresses, what that is. And then once that finishes, we potentially will have new addresses that we know about because like we've determined our new NAT address that we didn't know at startup time. And so ultimately what we'll do is we'll take that new IP address that we have determined is like pretty likely to be a valid new address. And then we use the new identify push protocol, uh, which again, Go already supports. And what that'll do is we'll send it to all of our connected peers, our new addresses. So we just send that subset of, of things out. That's basically it. Okay, that makes sense. So you've already got, uh, so there's already other peers that know about you and you're just sort of updating your address? Yeah, so everybody that's connected to you, because when you initially connect to them, right, you'll have that, that basic list. A lot of times it's like all local addresses if you're running a node on your computer. Um, and if we happen to determine that, oh, okay, you actually have a, a public address, 
then you can forward that to those peers and then they can try to reconnect you because sometimes they might be over like a relay that they're actually connected to you on. So. That makes sense. And so AutoNet, um, does that work using other peers or is it like some centralized uh, servers? It's for other peers. So ultimately the goal is that all you'd have all peers that know the AutoNet protocol. So whenever they connect to a peer, they can just communicate, help each other figure out what those IP addresses are um, or ports or anything else and then, and then push that out. So it's not centralized at all. Wow, that's really cool. Uh, and there's not currently a spec written for it, um, but I will be writing up a spec for that as part of um, running through all the Go code and figure out what they are doing. So, any other questions or comments? I believe there is actually now a spec. One second. Oh, is there? That was quick. There wasn't like last week when I looked, but we'll check it out. All right, if that is it, last call. All right, we are done. Uh, thanks everybody for coming uh, and we will see you next week on the JS Sync. Bye.